Well, Anne and I, the next couple of minutes, want to talk with you about our network and the power of all of us working together. So this is us. This is what we're together trying to do, which is illuminate nature's contributions to people. And it talks a little bit about how we do that, which is combining science and incredible policy and finance innovation with critical leaders from communities to companies to countries. But we want to talk, we'll hear a lot over the next three or four days about innovative science and also policies and innovations that are going on around the world. What Anne and I want to talk with you about is you and all of us. So what is our role? What are we doing in this network to help us achieve this vision that we share? And I think one of the main things we're doing is we're making the world a smaller place. So you might know this idea of six degrees of separation, and it's the idea that if you pick any random person in the world, you're likely not separated from them by more than six people. And that's because of this idea of between friends and friends and friends connections, you're probably somehow linked with them. And that's what we do here. It helps ideas spread faster. If you make the world smaller and you work your connections, then good ideas spread faster and lessons from bad ideas die more quickly. And Hollywood even made a game out of this. This game is called Six Degrees of... Kevin Bacon, that's this actor, and he is connected, they've done mathematical models on this to pretty much every actor in Hollywood because of the work they've done together, the work in movies. And this is what NatCap's network does. This is what we all do. We connect people all around the world and help shorten these chains of learning and sharing great ideas. So one example of this starts in Belize. This is Chantal Clark Samuels, the CEO of the Coastal Zone Management Authority and Institute. It's an intergovernmental institute agency in Belize that's charged with developing coastal development plans. And Katie Arkema from NatCap and a Stanford NatCap team and WWF NatCap team work together with Chantal. And they have now developed and approved the, in the Belizean government a coastal development plan that harmonizes tourism small-scale lobster fisheries, and coastal development that is protected from sea level rise and storms. So these two women here on the right, Michelle LeMay and Cassandra Rogers from the Inter-American Development Bank, came to some of these government-led workshops in Belize and saw our work. They came to this symposium a couple times and got really excited about this network of learning and science practice that we have. So they invited us to work with the government of the Bahamas who was just initiating their own development plan. And they have now approved a development plan that really starts instead of with ecosystems, it starts with livelihoods and human safety, but it has ecosystems interspersed in all of it. Because of these local leaders and this work in those two countries, there's now an opportunity with the Inter-American Development Bank to spread these approaches in a systematic way and get standard development planning approaches throughout all of Latin America and the Caribbean. So here we are at the IDB annual meeting last year where we're discussing this idea with a number of leaders there. So this is just one example in the Caribbean area how ideas from two countries led by incredible leaders there have now had the opportunity to spread throughout a much bigger region. That same kind of work is happening all over the world. As our colleagues in China will, will share with you today and over the next couple of days, amazing work to lift people out of poverty through natural capital approaches. Similar work with green economies in Mozambique you'll hear about over the next couple of days. And places from Chile to Myanmar are also doing sustainable development planning for infrastructure. The idea around all of these projects is that ecosystem health is connected to human well-being. And if you can illuminate what those connections are, you can really transform policies in really quick ways. We'll also hear from our colleagues from Mongolia who are doing some really innovative work around sustainable livelihoods for herders and, and regenerative grazing practices. 
So because we're mostly nature lovers in this room, I think everybody is, you can think of this as a forest with incredible strong work in each of the regions. So the trees might be the countries or the regions. There's China, Belize, Myanmar. And that work is critical for benefits to people and ecosystems in those countries. But with our networks of people sharing stories and asking for help and giving help on technical um, capacity building and policy innovations, that's what's going to make these ideas take hold and take off. So is this approach working? I just wanted to remind us all how far we've come. I'm not going to go through this timeline in any detail, but think about the early 1990s when the idea of capital in ec economics work was just being able, being begun to be discussed um, as a knowledge foundation early time. Some early pioneering use cases such as New York's water supply and forever Costa Rica started and really sparked people's imagination and got excitement going. Then in 2005, with the publication of the Millennium Ecosystem Assessment, showing that this was possible, we could account for ecosystem service change globally. And NatCap was founded right then with the goal of systematizing these approaches. And we're now farther to the right. There's been a lot of exciting explosion of initiatives and work and country governments and civil society and NGOs, and we're right at this mainstreaming and scaling phase. So that comes back to us. What are we each doing to help be that network and spread these good ideas more quickly? One thing we can do really well is publish papers. We have kind of have that. These are, this is a Google Scholar search of publications with natural capital or ecosystem services in them. So we're pretty good at that. And there's a lot of incredible innovative science happening in those curves. But what about these other things, these sort of less tangible things that we've been talking about already today? It's that sharing stories, building capacity, and telling one another, I need help on this, or can you show me how you did that, and sharing your successes and lessons. We need to up our game. This is an urgent time in our, in our planet, and we, if we really are intentional about how we work together, we can scale our efforts. So here's up, us on the top. Last year, we'll take a picture out there in a minute, as Henry said, and here we are with the Chinese Academy of Sciences where there were 400 scientists from over 20 provinces just last fall. So I'm very grateful for the chance to be part of this network. And I'm really inspired by all the work that we're doing. And I'm excited to learn more from all of you over the next couple of days. <laughs>